Hey everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colin Way and I'm really quite excited about this project today. We're going to make a salt and pepper shaker. Um, but I had this conversation with Steph, who's behind the cameras and doing all the trickery behind there, um, that um, I don't actually have any corks or bungs for this one. So she um, very kindly suggested that we're going to, in that case, um, make a thread. So we'll make a female and male thread um, with our thread chasing tools, the crown thread chasing tools. And um, and we're going to also do a lot of the project with my easy wood tools as well. These are uh, my easy start tools. So we're going to do quite a lot um, with tools that I'm not always um, uh, sort of associated with using. Um, I really enjoy threading, um, but I don't do a huge amount of it. Um, so um, I, you'll see me or you'll hear me go fairly quiet when we get to that stage so you know why it's because I'm concentrating um, and the same with the the easy start tools I've had these for quite a while now and I use them from time to time I tend to use them on resin and, and very hard timbers and end grain and things like that because they they work superbly on those um, in those areas um, so we're going to crack in to this one um, and this is a, a, a quite an interesting timber as well there's a lot going on with this timber this is one that I've made already so this is the salt I've got a single hole in the salt we've already uh, threaded this one there's a lot of water staining on this particular piece of, of boxwood um, but there we are single hole in the top and threaded inside and out um, we're going to do three holes on this one but look at the water staining the the spalting almost there's a big um, dead branch there there's lots going on like i say so an interesting bit of timber so what we're going to do is create that there we are there's the grain lining up i need to work on my my grain lining and we'll do that for this one but again both sides done all nice and dinky just a nice little salt pot we're going to make the pepper to uh, to match so i'm going to do um, a few things first and um, i will need to keep being reminded of of certain parts but let's clean up that end grain first um i'll go straight in with the rougher uh easy rougher i'm just going to check security there that's good i'm just going to take off that just side scrape that uh that first surface drop the tool rest down a little bit just side scrape the, the to clean up the uh the side grain There we are. This is actually going to be the bearing surface, so I want it nice and clean. I want it nice and clean, so I want to get right into that little nib. So just adjust the, the tool rest to suit. There we are. That's going to give us a really, really clean surface um, to work from. I don't know whether that can be seen. Let's bring a light around a little bit. You can see how clean that is. Um, now, the external diameter, that's obviously going to be important that it matches what I've got on this one. So I've set my calipers already, look, to match. So we've got a little bit to take off, probably about two to three mil to come off of there. So again, we'll do the same thing. Um, we'll start with the rough. I'm going to bring the tool rest back a little bit because I don't know whether you can see on this particular tool there is a, a slant to the very front surface. Okay, there. So that means when it's held there, I need to just come back with the tool rest to make it grab. So all I'm going to do again, just to keep things sound, is tidy up. I'm just going to side cut again with this one. And I've already done most of the job, of course, because this was a log section. So before we went live, before we put the cameras rolling, um, I roughed it down anyway with the with the rougher. Um, but that's just clean that surface up. I know I've got um, a lot of material to take away, but I'm going to do the, the 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 main part of the hollowing and the um, and the threading before I then take it down to its final diameter, which I can do once I've done that. So next thing, this little little shaker is about there on the on the project so i'm going to part off so my first parting line here okay then we can then flip that over in the chuck and take out the center of what will be the lid 
before we remount it again. This I'm not going to part off at this point because I want to hold this in the chuck later on. That's going to be my, my sort of holding point for the lid when we actually come to, to finish the top and drill it and all those sorts of things. So I'm not going to do that yet. What we will do, once I've finished the hollowing, the threading, um, and then rejoined it, I will then part the whole thing off before cleaning the base. So that's always going to be held in that area there. All right, so as long as I've got enough material, which I have here, then I can carry on and part off. So I'm going to use a, I've got a conventional parting tool here. Just give myself a little bit of room for the passing tool. So about a cut and a half, I'd say. There, get ready and catch the lid. Just nice and gentle when you're parting off. No need to make any big heavy cuts. Just nice and gentle. Move that up and down just to get that last little bit cut away. And all that will happen is that little bit of I went, I was almost gonna say waste, but the lid will just stop in your fingers. There we are. And that's our lid. So the top is gonna be that section there. So let's just put a T so there's no doubting where the top is put that to one side just for the moment let's clean that surface and the only reason i'm cleaning the surface really is because we're going to drill in a minute so just clean that last little bit away there we go and we might as well um, go straight into the drilling. I've already got my drill chuck in the lathe, so um, let's just go with our drill bit. Um, and I'm using a sawtooth forcing a bit. This one is it's around about 30 mil in diameter. Let me just double check that to give you that. So the di 30 mil. Yep, it is 30 mil. And depth wise, I'm going to take the depth reading from the um from this the shaker that i've already done and i'm going to keep them the same really pretty stuff this even though there's lots of what a lot of people would phrase as flaws in here um it's really quite attractive that you've got a lot of the grain running around those so-called flaws a little bit of burr a little bit of inclusions in bark um, and of course a lot of spalting so really quite exciting stuff um, let's have a, a quick measure of this one. So all I'm going to do, look, pop the depth gauge in. There we are, so at 40 mil deep. All right, I don't know whether that you can make that out, but 40 mil deep there. So we're going to take that in to 40 mil, and that will be my finish. I'm just going to mark that so I know where my doom not pass line is and we're going to do the same here so i'm going to mark mark that i've done that with a pencil but of course you can do it with a tape or anything like that um, and lay speed's a bit of an issue here i wouldn't be doing any um, drilling with a bit like this that's over um, 900 rpm um, that's ample for this one and we're going to keep it moving as well keep that bit moving if the, that bit stays still we're going to get a huge amount of heat i will add a little i would add a little bit of wax as we start going properly as well don't worry too much about the steam that's just what happens all right time for wax before we get too much friction i've lost my mark let me just pop my mark back in again there we are right 
So, in terms of lubricating and stopping some of that that burning, I'm going to use wax. This is just just your regular wood wax. Anything that you have to hand. That's the microcrystalline one I'm using there. But anything like that. That will just help lubricate the cut. Stops the screeching and the howling. A little bit more. There we go. So this is going to be the bottom of our shaker. Right there. <clears throat> and this we're going to make look like this. So the bottom of my hole on the inside should be there. There we go, look. And then the actual bottom is around about that point. So we've got loads of space here to part off in a moment. So we've got a good, good amount of room. So what I need to do now is create this here. So this little um, thread. So this is the male thread. So I'm going to part down. So let's very accurately mark it <laughs> prep up for my threading I'm going to work on the diameter as well so there we are I'm going to cut in there with a the parting tool in a moment um, in terms of diameter of thread let me just take another, another measurement with a set of calipers because I want to copy everything I've done here I haven't the first one was sort of free roaming I could do what I want now obviously I'm making a pair of something and they've got to be the same so I'll cut down just a bit larger than that diameter we'll go straight in there with the the easy wood the rougher speed can come up a little bit can come down turn the lay speed up a little bit drop the tool rest down there we are and now I'm gonna go for a little 1 8 parting tool just going to create a relief. And there, that's all we need to do. Now, lay speed is important here. We're going to turn the lathe right the way down. 250, 300. There we are. And we're starting with my straight threading tool. Well, one thing I need to do is just just put a little chamfer on the front of that bit of timber there. So just a little tickle. That'll do. There we are. Back down to three, 300. 250, 300. There we are. And we're going to start on the corner. So As I start deepening that thread, I'm just bringing the handle round. It 
It's important that you have that little relief. If you don't have the relief, you'll suddenly hit timber. And so the thread chasing tool will stop moving. And of course, if it stops moving, you're not no longer having a thread. Just make sure it's straight. There we are. That's our first thread cut. Okay. So now we have to. Um, we're going to remount the um, the other piece and create a female thread. I am going to just put a rough cut with a parting tool in there now, though. So where we're going to finish, just so I can get these a little, you know, um, matched up nicely. So there we go. I'll make a couple of cuts. So I'll make the first cut a little bit long, and then I'll bring it back with the parting tool. So at least we can go back up again now. Here we are. So the regular parting tool, let's just pop a cut in. Check to make sure we know what the depth is. So I reckon I can take about a mil and a half off of that. We're there, we're spot on now, so the length is exactly the same. My next job is I'm going to take the diameter down. So we've got our calipers here, we're just going to reset. I'm going to go slightly proud so I can then put the two pieces together later. Let's go slightly wider, I'll go with my easy wood. go there we are so that's that's the right diameter so let's go all the way along I know all these tools, they have a label. This one's a rougher, the round one's a finisher, and then there's a detail. But to be quite honest, you can use them for whatever stage you are at. So I can use this quite quite easy to tickle um, a flat surface on something, and you'll get a really, really good finish. Um, so I found sort of manipulating them and ignoring the terms and ignoring, ignoring the names really beneficial. So I'm going to do a little bit of sanding in the inside there now. I'm going to add a little bit of wax to the thread to help it um, uh, join in a moment. So a little bit of uh, extraction on. I'm going to start with 150, watching my fingers. So I'm just going to shamp for that edge. I'm not going to sand the thread. Certainly not with this one, but I might put some web wax on it with some wax in a moment. go uh, let's go up to to a 240 and then a 400 
There we are. That's fine. So a little bit of wax. I think we can start thinking about the decorating in a minute. In a minute. So I'm going to wax the inside. I'm going to wax the thread, and I'm going to leave the rest just in case. Just in case we want to take a little bit more off that outside edge. And that should be fine. Good. Right, that can come off. Just for the minute that can come off. We should have them pretty much. Well, pretty much they should be the same. Well, they will be the same anyway. So that one's there. This is going to be my tester block, of course. That's going to be the top of my lid. We worked that out already. So we're going to come to this side. And I've got to make a copy of that one now. So we're going to be there. So I'm a little bit proud. So we know that. That's fine. We're going to cut in again with the drill bit. So let's just clean off that surface. There we go. Lay speed down. So under the thousand, so 900. There. Let's have a look at depth again. I'll do the same little test um, on the lid that we did on the body. Gonna mark my drill bit. Now I'm going to attack this slightly differently. The actual depth of that hole is to that point there, okay? But I'm only going to drill, I'm going to drill about three mil less than that, because then I'm going to go in the bottom with another tool just to clean away the hole that that um, center spike on the drill bit has left. I want a flat bottom on the inside. So we can down to our 900, do that little bit of drilling. If we need to add a little bit of wax, we will. I'm going to take the tailstock out of the way now. If I just stop that, we'll turn off, turn off the extractor for the minute. Let's take the tailstock out of the way. We'll um, get, give myself a little bit of elbow room by doing that. There we are. Good. Okay, so we eventually have to make a thread that's going to fit over the thread we've made on this bit. So a couple of things I want to do first in preparation for that. Certainly I've got to open that hole up a little. So bring that back. I'm going to use the little detail tool, which is the pointed one. Bit too low. to have a check I think there's got to go a lot more yet but I'm just going to check anyway yeah we've got loads to go 
Once I've done that, I'm going to just eat out the bottom a little bit. So remember what I said. There is a hole from that that forcing a bit. That needs to go. Check the size. Now we're starting to get there. I think probably one more cut. There. Now, a little bit away from the bottom, we're going to use... Jason Breach um, signature box scraper. This is perfect for getting right in at the bottom to do this particular job before I put the thread in. Because this is shaped really neatly with a nice radius um, a corner, I can not only plunge down, but it, once I get to the bottom, it really gives you that nice little contour on the bottom. Negative rake as well, so it's gonna get a really nice finish. Let's have a, a stop and a check. Yeah, we're good. Okay, now I'm gonna just double check with the depth gauge to see where I am. And we're we're there. Yeah, we're about a mil deeper than the other one, so never mind. <laughs> Let's just double check, make sure. We're about there for ready. Oh, we're ready for threading. So, again, what I'm going to do here, and we were talking about this on the outside, this recess that I've got on this section, this is important because if I don't have that, um, I'll probably crash the thread quite, quite easily, and I need to keep that thread going. You need a relief in the back. It's no different on the inside, so I'm going to cut um, a recess there as well. And for that, I'm actually using my, um, my crush grind... Uh, uh, cutter so this is used for when you're making um, salt and pepper grinders this creates a recess for the crushed grinds to grab into so this is really quite useful for doing this sort of thing so I'm gonna let's do a little recess Let's have a check and see if I'm deep enough. Looks pretty good. Yeah, that's plenty deep enough. And then again, I want to make sure that on that very leading corner, we've just got a little, little tape, a little chamfer, just to lead the cutter in. Lay speed all the way down again. So 250 to 300. And then we're going to thread in with this one. Okay, I haven't told you that this is an 18 TPI, by the way. So the, the thread is 18 uh, teeth per inch or threads per inch that we're working with. Start on an angle. And then slowly start bringing that back. Very, very gentle. And we're going to start checking. So you can see, you can see the thread we have inside. That's that's working quite well. I don't think it's quite deep enough yet, but let's just give it a go. Let's get it. It's cross threaded at the moment. Let's. It's not bad, you know. It's a pretty good fit straight away. So I'm happy with that. Happy with that. Good. 
I'll put a little bit of wax on it though. Just the wax just helps that thread move a little bit. It doesn't very often happen first time, so I was quite chuffed with that one. There we are. Now, one thing I have done with the other um, shaker is I've just put a little relief cut in, just to give us a little feature line. So, again, if we look at, at this one, I've just made this little relief cut. And it's only about two mil um, uh, deep, but it needs to be gauged again. So if I go back with my calipers, what have I done with my calipers? There they are. And we're going to just measure that. Cut a little relief. that's it and now I'm just going to clean up the front face of the thread good that's done next thing let's take another depth measurement just so we know where everything is bottom of that internal bit of the, the lid is nice and flat so the actual bottom is there, that's my do not pass line. So we're going to clean back to around about that point there. That can be done, of course, on the other box. So let's take that off, pop that back on. We've got clean joints here, so we know it's going to go back in the same place. It's a good dense timber as well. Let's pop that back together. I'm going to clean back to my line. So this is the line I want to clean back to, remember. We'll double check that on our lid in a minute once we get back close to that point. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Once I've done that, I can then take the diameter away. Clean everything up. I'm going to go with a bowl gouge now. I'm just going to skim that surface. There we are, that's that bit done. Let's go to the outside edge now. We'll clean this back to meet up with this surface. Then we should pretty much be there bar the drilling. So I'm gonna skim, handle down low.
pretty much all we're making here is a threaded box. That's all it is. Let's have a sand. And once we've got the sanding done, then we'll drill. And that will be that. We're starting off with a 150. I'll grab another one. Stop and have a double check before we put the wax on. Looking pretty good. Use pretty much any finish on this one. You can food, food safe oil, the wax is fine, a lacquer, no finish, really up to you. Here we are. Okay, so we're going to put the tailstock back on. Tailstock's going to go on because we want to do a bit of drilling. I'm using 3 mil drill bit for this. Lip and spur. We're going to do the initial one with a drill chuck. And then obviously the outer two, we're going to do that by hand. You can put it in the pillar drill, of course. Um, but we're just going to do a freehand drill. So first one, we can do with the support of the tailstock. Nice and central. And then come off, drill chuck, come out the lathe, over to my cordless. And what I'll do to make sure we get it in the same place, if I just open up a set of dividers, so if I go with this nice dinky set of dividers. There we go, one. Let's make those a bit bigger. My poor old eyes can't quite see that. Sorry if I put that right. In front. No, we're right, right. Not in front of the camera. Good. might choose to be a little bit more accurate than what I've done there but that seems to work you know there we are nice and neat holes good so let's part off and just clean that base up and I'm gonna go again I'm gonna go just a 1 8 parting tool get my light out of the way Lay speed around about the sort of 1400 mark for this piece to be fine. Give yourself a clearance cut as well. I'm going to bring the hand around to support. Just check your 
your arms. Make sure you've got nothing dangling down in front of the chuck. Anything that can be grabbed. Nice and gentle. No, you don't need to rush this. Just let it come off gently. Otherwise, if you do, and the, the bottom is at all thin, what will happen is this will tear out. And if it tears out, then you've got a hole in the bottom again. So a little bit of care there. So what I'll do now, if I take off this chuck, we'll add my other chuck, because then I can start using all the power sanding pads and just take off that little bit of uh, fluff on the bottom. So we're going to add, add that one, and I have a little 50 mil pad somewhere. There it is. We're going to work with a radius on this one, so I'm going to work with the radius to get in nice and tight. So starting with a 180 grit. Dust extraction on again. So working with the actual radius to get into that area. Then we can work our way on up through. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to jump. Normally I'd go 240, but I'm going to jump to 400. A little bit of wax. for you so nicely matched up on the size same with the diameter we've got diameters the same and instead of a bung in the bottom we've got a thread now so you can fill your your salt or your um, pepper uh, in there and then thread on your lid and I think I've got the grain matching pretty well on this one it's not cheating tighten up too much yeah that ain't bad that is, that isn't bad that isn't bad. It's only better than the first one. So there we are. A nice couple of little couple of little salt and pepper shakers. A little relief cut on the side there. Now, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, yeah, it is, is a little bit of a design um, option, but it hides a lot of your uh, mistakes if you get a lazy thread or anything like that. Um, so I really enjoyed that. I said at the beginning I'm really quite excited to be doing this. A lot of the time my excitement comes from the timber that we're using. This is boxwood. It turns beautifully. Um, but to be given a chance to do a little bit more hand thread chasing again. Those little skills that you pick up by practicing and doing little projects like this is really quite cool. And I haven't really seen any threaded um, salt and pepper shakers. It just gives us another chance to play with those um, those types of tools. Um, and I've had a chance to play with my Easywood tools as well, my easy, easy Start tools. So I hope you enjoyed that. Again, I'm going to say it because I say it every time. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notifications button so every time we do a video, you will be notified and you can come and join us again. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.